What's up, everybody? And today we're checking out, um, I guess, I have been given this video probably and recommended in the comments more than any video I have in a very long time. It's someone called The Fat Electrician. And the video is America obliterates half of Iran's Navy in eight hours. Operation Praying Mantis. It's a long video. This is a long video, guys. Sit down. Let's enjoy it. Okay. I don't know much about this guy, the fat electrician. Um, it says that he's called Nick and he's a former 68W medic. I don't know what that is. My presumption it is some sort of American um, military. You know, I obviously I lived in America for nine years, but I was in the British military. I grew up in England and um, I was in the Royal Marines Commando. So a little bit different. And I don't know what the 68W medic is. If someone can let me know what that is in the comment section down below, that would be lovely. As always, there will be a link to the original video down in the description. Go over to his channel, like, subscribe and all that good stuff. Very important that you do that. I've just done it as well. We're going to watch this video, we're going to have some fun, I'm going to turn on subbies, and we're going to see what his videos are all about. Uh, don't forget to check out Dreadnought Meter in the description as well. That's the new project me and my brother are working on where we are making our own mead. And it's really fun. Anyway, I'll shut up, let's pop this up, and let's, uh, let's have some fun. It's a long video. The time that the U.S. Navy got upset and destroyed half of Iran's entire naval fleet in a single eight-hour workday. <laughs> Single eight hour work day? Praying Mantis. But real quick, this video is sponsored by Zydax Custom Gaming PCs. They are all built right here in America with American based tech support. So why would why would the American military go up against Iran? I know Iran's kicking off right now and they've been kind of you know a little bit iffy for quite some time now. In fact I'm gonna let him go through the sponsor and I'll just quiet it down a little bit. Why why did Americans Navy and military destroy their uh We're gonna find out, I guess. Iraq decided to invade Iran. Why? Don't really care. Not pertinent to the story. However, at the end of that war, Iran decides, hey, we're gonna pull a page out of the old art of war by Sun Tzu. We're gonna cut off the enemy supply lines, deprive the enemy of nice things. It's gonna work out great. Iraq's got a weak navy, we're gonna wipe out their navy, and then every time they send out an oil tanker through the Persian Gulf. We're going to blow that up. So they can't sell any liquid dinosaur. They can't make any money. They go broke. We win the war. Hooray. It's a solid liquid dinosaur. <laughs> All right. I have a feeling just on first impressions that I'm going to like this guy plan so they do exactly that then kuwait comes out of left field and they're like hey we've been financially backing iraq through this entire war for the past seven years we need to make sure they win so we can get our money back so we're gonna go ahead and let iraq use our oil tankers to export oil so iran is like well that's an easy problem to solve i'll just blow up all the kuwaiti oil tankers as well which is exactly what they do but here's the catch kuwait at this point in time is like the one major exporter of oil that wasn't really part of opec meaning that they were selling oil on the global market significantly cheaper than Probably to America, and there's one thing that you don't do with America, and that is mess with its oil, because America will come down on you hard, because they see oil more valuable than their own citizens. <laughs> That's true. I guess Britain probably does as well. I don't know why I'm freaking chirping on as a British and an American citizen. I am dual citizenship now, because I lived in America for nine years and I got it. Come at me. A dual citizenship than everybody else driving down the entire oil market. And now that their oil tankers are getting blown up as well, it means that Kuwait can no longer sell oil on the cheap cheap, meaning that Iran has now inadvertently committed the cardinal sin of the late 20th century, raising gas prices. Now the entire Western <laughs> world looks over at the Persian Gulf like, the fuck? <laughs> the ghost of Sun Tzu's... <laughs> Anyone who uses a Lord of the Rings reference is already in my good books, guys. I'm, I'm, I'm liking this guy. I'm liking his stuff. Sitting there shaking his head like that's that's the one exception. I would have messed with any supply line except for that one because we all know what happens next. Yep. 
<laughs> yeah, I love that he's good to that. To assemble the largest naval convoy operation since World War II, send them into the Persian Gulf to protect Kuwaiti oil tankers. It is at this moment that Iran should have been like, well, that's unfortunate. Time to figure out plan B because this obviously is not going to work out. However, they decide that they're going to double down. What they're going to do is they're going to take a bunch of magnetic underwater mines and they're just going to spread them out all over the Persian Gulf in international waters. And that's not going to have any consequences. At oh all. My so fast days. forward. Oh my days. It feels like Iran just... How can I put it politely? It feels like they're the moody teenager of the Middle East. Does anyone else agree with that? Seems like they're the moody teenager, right? On April 14th, 1988, the USS Samuel B. Roberts, a guided missile frigate, which is basically brand new at this point, this is like its first big operation, is out there escorting a Kuwaiti oil tanker, and it runs into a minefield, hits a mine, blows up the keel of the ship. The keel wow. is this bottom part right here. It, like, supports and stabilizes the structure of oh the entire ship. Oh, my God. Ship, and it gets blown completely in half. At this point... The only thing holding this boat together is the actual deck. One second, everything's fine. The next second, there's a 15-foot wide hole in the bottom of your ship. Holy everything's shit. Everything's on fire and water is rushing in. The USS Samuel B. Roberts took on half of its weight in water in the first minute. This is a catastrophe. Oh my god. I didn't know that happened. Yeah, the, the US Navy at this point is like, all right, game on. Game on. ...amount of damage that would sink 99% of ships, but as fate would have it, the crew of the USS Samuel B. Roberts had already been winning competitions for having the best damage control crew in the Navy. So the entire crew gets to work. They're putting out fires. They're plugging holes. They're literally cinching the hole together with steel cables trying to stabilize it because the only thing holding it together is a deck at this point. Over the course oh of the next God. five hours, the entire crew fights their ass off and somehow manages to get the situation under control and limp the ship all the way back to Dubai where they can get it to a port. And all right. I feel like there's already so much to un un unpack here, and I feel like I should have my dad, who is in the Royal Navy in the Falklands War here. And I've been on ship. That was primarily my job in the Royal Marines Commandos, right? I was on a ship, and um, for me, my job was protecting the ship. Now, my expertise is knowing near anything that's going on here. Anything near. But I've seen how a ship works, and through being on the boat, you are able to see the Navy in my instance, the Royal Navy, go through emergency drills, right? And they do. They go through the drills. They time it. They, they do competitions. There's, there's an there's a in-house kind of rivalry to try and get them times up and up and up as best they can, all right? Which does plenty of things. Firstly, it keeps people happy on ship because they've got something to work to. Sometimes you can have a really boring run out in water, and it's good to keep your mind occupied. Secondly, it improves the crew. Thirdly, it protects the ship, right? These are all benefits to doing this type of stuff. So a, a brand new vessel, brand new US Navy vessel has this incredible team that are genuinely passionate about looking after and getting good times on these drills. And something like this happens and they manage it. That is the difference between a proper Navy and a shit Navy. And the most incredible part of all of it not a single American was killed. Only 10 men were injured during the fire and the initial explosion. Wow. So the crew survived. The boat's basically completely destroyed. Then America sends in an underwater crew, figure out what happened. They find the remnants of the mine. They check out the other mines. Yep, they're Iranian. At this point, now somebody has to inform the president because this is a big deal. And the president at this point in time is, let me check my notes, uh, fucking Ronald Reagan. I'm from the government <laughs> and I'm here to help. So they go ahead and they brief Ronald Reagan on everything. <laughs> I love his optimism on that. Thing that happened. He's super happy that everybody survived, and he's like, okay, well, here's what we're going to do. We're going to issue a proportional response. And what the U.S. Navy heard was... Isom. All right, so here's the Isom. Really have three... <laughs> This guy's really good at editing his videos, isn't it? Yeah, the Royal Navy is... Uh, sorry, the U.S. Navy is going to uh, do a bit of slap hand. You know, they're going to teach them a bit of a lesson out there. Oil rigs in the Persian Gulf that are not being used for drilling oil, but as military bases for their naval operations. So the U.S. Navy is going to go ahead and take out all three of those. Now, I don't really know what the guided missile frigate to oil rig exchange ratio is, but we're going to go ahead and err on the side of caution and say that it's not quite proportional enough yet. Oh, my God. 
So Iran also really only has like two modern naval vessels. That's the Iranian frigate Sahand and the Iranian frigate Sabatland. They're going to go ahead and take out at least one of those, maybe both. We'll see how proportional they want to get. And then by the time they get... <laughs> yeah, we'll see. We'll see how much fun we're having. Oh my days. I mean... <sighs> Let's try and take our biases out of being, you know, being a Brit who's a friend of American military, married to an American, and also now being a British American citizen. Um, let's take our biases out of it. They purposefully destroyed an American vessel. There has to be some sort of repercussion, right? Obviously, depending on who's in charge and blah, 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 will depend on and what country it is, will depend on what that repercussion is. But there's got to be a repercussion for that, right? Like, there's not, you can't just be like, that was bad, naughty, naughty. There's, there's, there's got to be repercussions for something as drastic as that. Get all that done. That should be a nice eight hour work day. It'll be time to clock out and go get some ice cream. So in order to get all this done by quitting time, they're going to go ahead and establish three different surface attack groups. Each group is going to have two destroyers and one bonus ship. That bonus ship is either going to be an amphibious landing ship or a frigate. Either way, they're all going to be identified as Bravo, Charlie, and Delta. Bravo group is tasked with taking out two oil rigs. Charlie group is tasked with taking out the one remaining oil rig. And Delta's mission is to go hunt down those two frigates and take them out. And then just for... Can you imagine getting them orders? By the way, your orders, there's two Iranian, Iran vessels, Iranian vessels. Um, you know what they are because it's the only two they've got. You have got to track them down and take them out. See so yeah, have fun by boop. That. Imagine being like, all right, lads, I just got a call. This is what we've got to do. Holy shit. Insurance purposes, we're also going to have the USS Enterprise parked right outside the Persian Gulf to provide air support, you know, in oh case my we need it. God. So April 18th, 1988, four days after the mining of the USS Samuel B. Roberts, Operation Praying Mantis goes into full swing. I want to know, actually, before, did, did Iran actually confirm it was them? Did they turn around and say, yeah, that's us? That was us that, and we don't want you in this area. Is that what they did? And Bravo Group shows up at their oil rig first. At which point they radio over to the oil rig and inform them that they will be blowing it up in five minutes and that they should all leave. So a bunch of people start leaving. They hop in tugboats and take off. Bravo Group, seeing that they're making an honest effort to actually evacuate, agrees to give them 15 more minutes. So fast forward 20 minutes later, they send out another radio message. Hey, Time's up. They then fire the five inch guns right over the top of the oil rig with the round set to air burst, hopefully scaring off any stragglers. Mm. And it is at this point that some Iranian military member decides that he is going to audition to be the main character of this story because he hops on a 23 millimeter anti-aircraft gun and opens fire on Bravo Group. And without oh, skipping no. A no. No, he's not going to make a difference. He's not going to make a difference beat one of the five inch guns on one of the destroyers just goes poof, and just fucking direct hit smokes this dude barely touches the rest of the oil rig this guy definitely not the main character but the silver lining he at least <laughs> made it into the credits as baloney miss cloud number one now obviously i'm paraphrasing here but at this point bravo group radios over to the oil rig one last time something along the lines of hey does anybody else need to find out what it's like to chew five gum are you fuckers ready to quit the oil rig finally radios back and is like yeah yeah, please cease fire. We're going to leave. So all the Iranian military members leave. Bravo group decides to open up on it for a little bit with the five inch guns before sending over a couple of Hueys full of Marines. The Marines hop out, place some demo charges, hop back on the helicopters, take off. The entire oil rig blows up and already things are getting more proportional. Yeah. Oh, so that's an actual picture right there. So the, the, the lads got on there. Pop some frigging explosives down and we're like, all right. Let's get out of here. Boom. Isn't that a Call of Duty mission? Where they go in an oil rig and then blow it up? Isn't it? Isn't that Call of Duty, like the new Modern Warfare? I'm pretty sure you do that. Let me know in the comments. And while all that was happening, Charlie Group made it to their first oil rig as well, and pretty much the exact same thing played out. The only differences were Charlie Group didn't have Marines to place the demo charges, they had Navy SEALs, and when the Iranians opened up with the 23mm anti-aircraft guns, they just decided to keep firing 5-inch shells at the oil platform until it burst into flames and burnt the entire thing to the ground. At which point, the commander of the destroyer kind of looks over at the Navy SEALs and is like, sorry, I guess you guys get to sit this one out. <laughs> oh, mission got cancelled? Oh, sit down, lads. Take a break. <laughs> Got to the naffy. <laughs> so, 
Good. And while all that's going down, Bravo <laughs> Group's already making their way over to the third oil rig, at which point they pick up something on radar, and it's definitely another enemy ship headed right towards them. And at this point, you have to remember, this is the late 1980s. None of the American sailors have seen naval warfare on this scale. The pucker factor is on. They are getting harpoon missiles ready, and they are about to get in, like, one of the biggest naval fights since World War II. At which point, whoever's in charge of Bravo Group decides to take a deep breath, and they're like, okay, let's just... Let's send up a helicopter real quick just to verify that it's actually an enemy ship. So the helicopter goes up. <laughs> That's radios... a solid idea, though, because, you know, vision out at sea is pretty... Uh... But no, it's not. No. I think they're doing this just out of pure 100, 110% check it. The vision, if it's a clear sky, is actually relatively decent. So putting up a helicopter, you know, they're giving them the benefit of the doubt. They're double checking and making sure that they're not going to shoot a Russian vessel or something like that. Fair one. Back to Bravo Group. It's definitely a warship, but it's yeah. a Soviet destroyer. At which Ooh. point, everybody's like, what? What is happening right now? So they radio over to this Russian destroyer, and they're like, what are your intentions? And the Russian commander radios back in broken English. I swear to God, this is a real quote. I'm just here to take pictures. For <laughs> Fair one. For history. Look, I know that I bash the Soviet Union and communism every single chance I get, but this time around, I got to give it to them. These guys know how to party. Just straight up rolling into the middle of the largest naval operation yeah. since World War II to eat popcorn and watch. It's incredible. <laughs> At this point, I ran... I mean, yeah, it makes sense for... Let's, let's take the comedy out of that for a second, right? Which is very easy to do. The Soviet Union at this point are like... America's using their weapons. Let's go and scout and see exactly what they've got so we can either confirm what we already know or we can see if there's anything new. We can look at the tactics. There's an, actually a, a, a lot of information there that that Soviet Union ship is probably surveying. Uh, there's actually quite a lot of stuff going on there. I know it's very easy to just laugh at a lot of stuff, um, but the intentions of these ships are deadly serious at all times, right? Like, we've got to take our silly hat off and be like, all right, what are they actually doing here? They're, they're probably keeping an eye on what we've got. And I reckon, even though that was probably funny getting that through the comms, everyone on that ship was like, all right, well, let's not shoot anything. Let's not do anything that we've not given away yet. At the end of the day, it's probably not going to be a difficult task for them anyway. Does that make sense? Finally figures out that there's something going on, but they don't really know what, so they just begin attacking any ship they can find, and the first ship they found was a civilian cargo ship called the Willy Tide, that they begin attacking with bog hammer style speedboats. So the Willy Tide radios for help, the USS Enterprise responds by yep. sending up a bunch of A6 intruders, as well as F-14 Tomcats. Whew. The A6 intruders show up, start dropping cluster bombs, they end up hitting one of the speedboats and scattering the rest. The civilian cargo ship is saved, hooray, cutting back to Charlie Group, now there's an Iranian fast attack ship coming right at them. So they radio over like, hey, yeah, we're kind of going around blowing up all your stuff, but also we've got a very specific list. You're not on it. So how about you just go away and we'll forget we saw you. The Iranian fast attack ship message. I guarantee he's going to say they didn't turn around and so they got blew up. Just back. Sounds good. We'll do that. And then oh. they just keep driving right towards them. Oh, and then this classic. Iranian yeah. fast attack ship gets within like 15 miles of Charlie Group, which is like point blank range for a naval battle yes Charlie group radios again dude what are you doing to which they respond i'm following orders and then they proceeded to lock their radar on charlie group which charlie group can see at which point Char yeah at this point they're probably like all right game on let's just absolutely do him wow Charlie Group immediately launches five missiles directly at the Iranian vessel. The Iranian vessel fires a harpoon missile back at Charlie Group. Both groups now have missiles in the air, screaming towards one another. The Americans launch countermeasures, shooting up chaff rockets that end up catching the harpoon missile, detonating it in midair. Yep. The Iranian vessel, on the other hand, did not have any countermeasures capable of stopping the newer technology behind the American missiles. And that's why the Soviet Union is there, was to look at this technology and be like, what have they got? I'm guaranteed that's what it was. I mean, they weren't exactly there, but you get what I'm saying. They were in the area trying to take pictures it's the truth and it would end up getting sunk pretty much immediately then before anybody can really even fully digest what just happened radar picks up three iranian f4s screaming towards charlie group oh, charlie shit. group then turns 
fires a bunch of surface-to-air missiles at the F-4s. The F-4s see them coming. They're like, oh shit, they pop a U-turn and try to outrun them. F-4s, while they are extremely fast, can't outrun missiles, so one of the missiles ends up blowing a wing off one of the F-4s. Now America's taking out an entire naval vessel and an F-4 that they did not plan on taking out. Whoa, this is... Like, why don't I know about this? Like, this is a law. Why did I know about this? We know that currently Iran is kind of kicking up again. And it's mostly because of the whole ordeal with Gaza and Israel right now. Um, which we're obviously not going to get into in this video. But um, it's crazy how confident Iran was against America. Like, I, I hate to say it, right? But it's the truth. America have the, by far, I don't know why I, I said I hate to say it, because I'm actually pretty happy to say it, because they're my friends, and I'm part of them. They have the, the biggest and the best military in the world. Whether that's through unfortunate circumstances of taxing the shit out of people to get it, the fact is they have the best military in the world. Not only the best personnel, but the best technology. Right? And for a country like Iran to be like, we're going to go up against them, it's just like, what are you doing? It's ridiculous. It's like a school kid going up against Conor McGregor. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's just, it makes no sense. And it's throwing off all of our proportions. And because of that, American leadership orders Bravo Group to stand down. We're not going to go take out that third oil rig. Uh. And right as soon as that order gets given out, Delta Group chimes in is like, hey, we found that frigate we were looking for. So now nobody yep. knows what to do because on one hand, things are already getting out of control, but on the other hand, we really want to take out these frigates. So yeah. American leadership decides, well, we might not even have to make a hard decision. Maybe that's not even the frigate and the radar's wrong. Why don't you go ahead and send a couple A6 intruders over, do a flyby. They can verify that it's actually this new modern frigate and if it is, we'll make a decision from there. Or so they thought, because the A6 pilots are about to decide that they are, in fact, the main characters of this story. You see, the USS Enterprise and its aircraft aren't really supposed to be doing a whole lot. They're more or less just there for insurance. In fact, they're only allowed to engage the enemy under one of two conditions. One, the President of the United States signs off on it, which wow. is actually what happened with the speedboats earlier. Or two, they get fired upon first. So yeah, so... Uh... Yeah, we can talk about whole, like, rules of engagement and stuff like that, but one of the big ones is, if, for anyone, is if you get shot, you can shoot them back. That's what you get told in Afghan and all that lot. So it doesn't surprise me that even though they've been told they have the highest of the president's got to sign off on it, the Bobby Basics still stands that if you're being attacked, you can attack. You know what I mean? So they got told to go fly by this boat to verify that it is, in fact, the new modern frigate, but... They didn't get told how to fly by the boat, so they drop down 50 feet above the water and just <laughs> gun it, and they buzz the entire ship. So the ship opens fire with its AA guns, but these planes are so low to the water, the AA guns can't actually aim down low enough, so all the anti-aircraft fire... I bet they knew that. I bet they knew it. It goes right over the top of them. They continue to stay low enough till they get out of anti-aircraft gun range, and then they pull up, at which point the ship launches a bunch of surface-to-air missiles at them. They drop chaff as a countermeasure, takes care of those, no big deal. They then go around, do a U-turn, send a radio message to this frigate, I'm going to sink you now. Which they can now legally do, because remember, the ship fired on them first. Victim to one of the classic blunders. So the A6 <laughs> fires an anti-ship harpoon. Wow, the brutality and the like, just the stoicism of they've shot at us. Time to take them out. Like, not even a hesitation. There's no like worry. It's just we are the dominant force here, and if you're gonna if you're gonna fuck around, you're gonna find out. Yeah, you know I mean? <laughs> said that meme where it's like it's the old guy and he's got a graph. And he's like, the more you fuck around, the more you find out. <laughs> missile, and the second they pull the trigger on that, the fire control team from the USS Enterprise is like, what the fuck are you doing? We're not supposed to be killing things yet. And the A6s are like, look, they fired at us first. Them's the rules. Yeah. And the USS Enterprise is like, holy shit. Okay, <laughs> I guess. Let them have it. Then the harpoon <laughs> missile finally makes impact. It's a bullseye. The A6s do a U-turn, go, drop another 500-pound laser-guided bomb right through the deck of this frigate, fly past it, do another U-turn, come back, drop a 1,000-pound bomb on it. Then they radio over to the Enterprise and like, Oh yeah, my god, is that a legit picture? Is that a legit 
Is that real picture from it? Bomb on it. Wait. Then they radio There's no way that's real. If that's real, oh my god. Go over to the Enterprise and like, yeah, it's definitely gonna sink. We're gonna head back. So the A6s take off, headed back to the Enterprise, and like five minutes later, Delta Group shows up with their warships and begin firing on the already sinking frigate. They hit the magazine, the frigate explodes, <laughs> rapidly sinks to the ocean floor. At this point, naval leadership is like, okay, Jesus Christ, everybody stop killing things. We need to figure out what all happened. We gotta keep- In all, in all seriousness though, there's probably a lot of people on that ship. That really sucks that their Iran's um, officers and their, you know, higher ups didn't give a shit about them. Because that's the truth. They all knew that America would obliterate them. And yet they still give the orders. That's not good leadership right there. A lot of people died unnecessarily. Keep this proportional. Remember. Proportional. So they start radioing back and forth. Everybody's figuring out what everybody did. If anybody's hurt, what's going on, the whole story. And then as the A6s are making their way back to the USS Enterprise, guess what they happen to fly past? The other modern frigate. So now the entire US Navy is looking at this last frigate like SpongeBob looking at a jug of water. I don't need it. I don't need it. <laughs> I need it. <laughs> <laughs> but also, like, realistically speaking, the A6s are pretty much out of ammunition. The only thing they have left are 2,000 pound bombs, and those just aren't going to be enough by themselves without a harpoon missile to take down this ship anyways, so they really are just going to fly by and verify that it's the modern frigate. So the A6 and uh, go ahead. They I feel like it's not, it's not how it's going to, it's not how it's going to end. Do their flyby. It is, in fact, the new frigate that they thought it was, and it does, in fact, open fire on the A6s. A6s make it out completely unscathed, at which point they pop a U turn, and one of the A6 pilots is like, hmm. It's the bullseye womp rats in my T16 back home. So the A6 pulls up, <laughs> gaining altitude. I love this guy's videos. I love him. He uses all the favorite friggin' memes and reels. Memes and, and uh, yeah, I guess just memes. They're not really reels, are they? I'm so caught up in all friggin' modern technology. Who knows what they are, them just little clips from my favorite franchises like Star Wars and Lord of the Rings. And then dives down, aims its nose right at the frigate at like a 35 degree angle. They're doing a good old fashioned dive bombing run like it's fucking World War II. Oh the my AA God. The start firing, there's bullets whizzing past the plane, but they're committed now. They're closing in, closing in. The bombardier behind the pilot lets the pilot know, hey, I'm locked on. At which point, bombs away, the pilot pulls up, and the bomb goes right down the fucking smokestack of this boat. Blows up, completely destroying the entire engine room. That frigate is now dead in the water with no power. The A6 is going- Oh my god. The balls of that pilot. To be like, let's just go straight at him. I don't give a shit if they're going to start shooting at us. Let's just do it. And then you locked on and got a direct hit. The balls. Holy. Radio in that they have completely disabled this frigate, at which point the American leadership calls a complete ceasefire. They're going to go ahead and let that frigate survive, get towed off, potentially be repaired. With the U.S. Navy having effectively disabled or destroyed over half of Iran's functioning Navy, the U.S. military decides to call it a good day. Ends <laughs> Operation Praying Mantis. We all get to live happily ever after. Except, later mm. that night, Iran decided that they wanted to fight a little bit more, and they launched a bunch of silkworm anti-ship missiles at American vessels. See, this is the problem. This is their leadership problem. They just got obliterated. They got absolutely demolished, and all the way Iran's probably sat there thinking, has he got a Milnor tattoo on his hand? On his arm? Is that Milnor? And when I say that, I mean Thor's hammer. I mean this bad boy right here. Is that what it is? Because if it is, I'm I'm becoming a new fan of this guy. Anyway, I digress. Um, yeah, the 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 idiots, the idiots, that, and they're, they're putting their own people in risk. That's what they're doing. Luckily, no American vessels were actually hit. However, this is now a huge political problem because America has been mad at the fact that Iran even had silkworm missiles for years at this point, and the American government has made it very clear to Iran that if they ever used them, they would be going to war with America. Period. That's set in stone. So the Reagan administration, not wanting to kick off World War III in the 1980s, reaches out to the Iranian government and is like, here's what's going to happen. 
you're going to go ahead and admit that that was an accident. I'm going to sweep it under the rug and we're never going to talk about it again. Because if this <laughs> makes headline news and the American people find out, I'm going to have to get real proportional around here. So yeah. I like, okay, fine, whatever. It was an accident. Let's sweep that whole thing under the rug. But I am still going to take America to international court to try to prove that it was a war crime to take out my oil rigs. That way I can get reparations and make America pay for it. So yeah, but putting mines in the ocean, especially international waters, is a war crime. Them underwater mines, aren't they against the Geneva Convention? Am I wrong there? They go to international court, they lay out the case. The international court is looking at America like, okay, well, first of all, you're the fraction people. I don't know how you think that this is proportional, but it definitely wasn't. <laughs> Second of all, according to the Amity Act, you absolutely should not have attacked their oil rigs. This is probably True. a war crime. At which point the representative for America is like, well, actually, if you read the Amity Treaty between Iran and the United States, it only talks about ships and boats. It don't say shit about oil rigs, meaning I wasn't obligated to not attack those oil rigs. And again, they were attacked. America was attacked first. Come on. At which point the court is like, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Fucking, he's right, son of a bitch. Okay, well, I guess America's innocent because I've said it once and I'll say it again. It's never a war crime the first time. And now for the best part of the entire story. <laughs> war crime the first time that's the first time i've heard that america now proceeds to go over to dubai pick up what's left of the uss samuel b roberts tow it all the way back to maine then take the ship out of the maine that's where i was for the first seven years of the nine years i lived in america and then obviously i was in the school bus traveling the country then water get it in dry dock cut out the entire damaged section of the ship including the engine compartment build another module to fit in its place this thing weighs like 300 tons they jack it up weld it right where it's at get everything rehooked up reconnected and this boat is back out on the ocean one year later on april 1st 1980 wow it then goes on to get recommissioned and serves in the navy until 2015 I mean, playing Battleship Damn. against America's got to suck, right? Like, haha, I've sunk your frigate. And America's like, first of all, no, you didn't. Second of all, fuck your entire Navy as it picks up your board and just throws it at the wall. So in conclusion, if you do ever find yourself wow. being the leader of a foreign nation one day, the best advice that I can possibly give you is A, do whatever you can to not raise gas prices. And B, <laughs> whatever you do, do not fuck with America's boats. We do not like that shit. Thank you for watching. Best way to support the channel is like, comment, subscribe. Maybe go buy some merch at thefatelectrician.com. Quack, bang, out. All right. All right. I like that guy. Firstly, he's got the Milner on his arm, which I'm obviously a massive fan on. But secondly, he's funny. And thirdly, his videos are actually absolutely fantastic. This has been a long video. There will be a link down below to his video. Please go over to his video, give it a like and all that good stuff. It's very important that you do that. That video was fantastic. It was absolutely brilliant. I may react to some of his stuff again. Um, I don't like reacting to the same channel too many times because I don't want to take away from their views. Um, but uh, yeah, if you enjoyed it, let me know by commenting down below. Let me know what you think, like the video and all that good stuff. And like I said, his video will be in the description. Along with Dreadnought Meteor, the new uh, project me and my brother are working on, where we're making mead together. Other than that, guys, I love you all. Have a wonderful day. Goodbye.